So people stopped that had no business. There was a guy digging in the trash. He's like, who the bitch? <laughs> there was somebody in the store that popped his head out like, who the bitch? <laughs> One dude's riding a bike, minding his business. Skirt, who the bitch? Hold on, let me get off the bike and park this motherfucker. I need to see who the bitch is. I'm your host. I'm your host, Roy Wood Jr. Yeah. Disjointed. Give it up for Chris Red. I'm from Chicago, uh, you know, where I was raised mostly. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a big gang culture. Don't know if you heard. And growing up, man, I looked up to like the wrong kind of people because I was just like one of those guys who wanted to fit in with what I thought was cool. And who I looked up to was gangsters, man. Gangsters and pimps. They were the coolest people to me, man. They had like cars and shit, right? With women, money. They had the coolest outfits. Pimps had the limp. And I'm like, are they hurting? No, nigga. That's just swag. You know what I mean? And it was, it was cool to me, man. I, so I looked up to that. My big cousin, he was like the head of some gangsters and, this, and it was so cool to watch him do shit. And I was like, I want to be down with that. And I liked fighting too. I loved to watch fighting, but I didn't know how. I had never been in a fight. The most I had ever done at this point was be in the mirror like, ooh, 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 yeah. <laughs> If that fist come, I'd be like, no. <laughs> You're just stupid, because you don't know how fast fists move. Fists move fast. I don't know if anybody <laughs> has ever been hit, but it moves fast, and then another one comes right after, like, this is my brother. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. But I'm, this is my, my story is about how I lost my first two fights trying to be down. And I remember it like it was yesterday, uh, because, you know, we all remember the things that depress us the most. <laughs> Uh, I remember when my cousins, they parked their cars outside, they walked up to my house and they were like, yo, Chris, you wanna walk to the corner store with us? And my cousin, real thug, 6'5", tattoos all over the place, tattoo tear on his face. He's not a killer, he's just a crier, but the nigga <laughs> is real, you know? <laughs> and he was hanging out with so many gangsters, like six other dudes, and they were all gangsters that everybody knew, and they wanted me to walk to the store with them. And I'm like, hell yeah, dog, I'm gonna walk. And I was so excited and terrified because these were dangerous people. And I don't know if you've walked somewhere with somebody you scared of, but you don't walk like a normal person. I know it's one foot in front of the other. I know how walking works. But when you're around somebody carrying a pistol bigger than your head, you start thinking about shit. So I'm, so I'm walking the streets like one and two and one and two. <laughs> what's up, dog? I'm saying what's up to people I don't know. My cousin's smacking my hand out. Stop speaking to people you don't know, nigga. What's wrong with you? And then his friend was like, yo, what's wrong with your cousin? He's like, he retarded. So, he... <laughs> so I finally got cool, right? I finally got comfortable. It was a long, long walk. So I finally, like, oh man, I'm walking with the coolest guys in the neighborhood, man. I'm on my quest to be a gangster. That's right, I was on a quest <laughs> to be a gangster. That's what I wanted to be. And then, as, as, right before we get to the corner store, right? Uh, this guy, he was about 20 years old. I was 14 at the time. He walked right into me, full shoulder, pow, right in the middle of my chest. Boom, hit me, right? And I knew he did it on purpose. But see, I have two parents. I was raised right. So, I, <laughs> initially, I wanted to be like, excuse me, but I... <laughs> I felt like this wasn't the right environment for manners, motherfucker. <laughs> so, I, I, so I didn't say that. But what I did say was, huh, which is not better. <laughs> It was like, I was like a weak ass James Brown, you know what I'm saying? Huh, you push me, huh. <laughs> and, and that sound was very loud. Uh, the guy was confused and he thought I had said something, so he turned around and he said, what the hell you say, bitch? Now we're outside on the south side of Chicago. There's a bunch of people all around. And when somebody says bitch like that in, uh, in the hood, um, everyone stops to see who the bitch is, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so people stopped that had no business. There was a guy digging in the trash. He's like, who the bitch? 
There was somebody in the store that popped his head out like, who the bitch? One dude's riding a bike, minding his business. Skirt, who the bitch? Hold on, let me get off the bike and park this motherfucker. I need to see who the bitch is. <laughs> My cousins, they were not phased at all. They just looked at me because all of those gangsters knew they weren't the bitch. And I was like, holy shit, I've never talked shit to somebody in front of people before in public. This is my first time dealing with this. Uh, so I was like, <clears throat> that is not my name. <laughs> that is not the way to talk to a grown gangster with an alligator tattoo on his face. I said that shit as if I was gonna pull out my ID, like, look, my name is Christopher <laughs> Jarrell Red, and ain't no bitch in there, so. <laughs> I, I could tell it wasn't the right way to respond to this man by his face. He was confused. He was like, the fuck? Did, what the, the alligator on his face was confused with him. And he slapped my hand, right? Because I was pointing at him. And he smacked my hand. Now, I, what I wanted to do was like, mm, not, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to do something cool. But what came out was, mm, that ain't hurt, which it did. And you can visually tell it hurt because my face said, uh, and, I, <laughs> and he was like, yo, never mind all this shit, man. I'm about to fuck you up. And then I was like, oh, no, no. No. <laughs> I said that in my head. I was like, no. <laughs> but I realized I hadn't spoken yet. Then my cousin was like, dog, you got to prove yourself for all these gangsters. So I knew I had to say something, right? So I was like, ah. Oh. That is not the outcome, which is terrible. That is not how you respond to people. I said that shit like I had some type of bar grab behind me. If you look here, this is you, this is me, this is the outcome, and they're very different. Class dismissed. I knew it wasn't enough because my cousin was looking at me like, what the fuck is wrong with you? He didn't say that, but his eyes said it. His eyes was like... So I knew I had to follow it up. So I was like, you know what? I'm not good at this. I'm gonna just say what he said because it sounded real good. And so I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna fuck you. And before I could say up, <laughs> he hit me directly in my throat. <laughs> like direct, it was a direct line to my throat. My Adam's apple checked out, nigga. <laughs> It, I don't know if you've been hit directly in your throat, but a couple things happen. For one, your throat says, fuck it, and it just closes forever. Your spit is like, gets suicidal. It's like, goodbye, I don't need to be in the mouth. <laughs> Dog, I got hit so hard in my throat that I had a limp, and that is not how science works. I was like, oh, nigga, I'm a pimp now. I'm, a, I'm halfway to my goal. It made no sense, and I farted a little bit. I did, I farted. <laughs> Yo, I've never been hit so hard, I fart. I mean, but my throat was closed, so the air had to go somewhere. I don't know. It was very embarrassing, man. But what was more embarrassing is this was outside, man. So people from across the street saw a very different fight than the fight that went down, you know what I mean? They're like, yo, yo, dog, what happened over there, bro? That was crazy over there, what happened? All right, so let me tell you. So, uh, so the bigger dude was like, I'm gonna fuck you up, right? And for whatever reason, <laughs> the little dude was like, I'ma fuck you. <laughs> like, why would you say that? So the bigger dude hit him in the throat, saved his asshole for another day, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that was the story that went around the hood for like six months at least. <laughs> and I was like, that's not how it went down. My cousin was very embarrassed. He had a reputation to maintain. And I got my ass whipped for the whole hood. He grabbed me and took me home under my arm. There's no way to keep your masculinity when you're being grabbed under your arm by a grown man. I'm like, let me go. He's like, make me. I'm like, you know I can't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be. <laughs> so he threw me in the house, you know what I mean? He was like, Chris, stay out these goddamn streets. This shit ain't for you, dog. All right, go to school, be somebody. This shit ain't for you. You got hit directly in your throat, nigga. And you farted in front of everybody. And 
And I was like, yo, keep it down. From who, nigga? Everybody saw it. <laughs> and then he closed the door and I was like, no, nah, I gotta avenge myself. But he was gone already. <laughs> and usually, you know, when something like that happens, you're like, you know what, this isn't for me. He's right, I'm gonna go, go do something else. But I was a hard-headed kid with goals. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna learn how to fight. I'm gonna redeem myself. This is what I'm about to do. So the whole year until they asked me to fight again, I was practicing. Right? I was fighting friends. We would just be boxing, wrestling in the yard and shit, get my hands up. I would watch Bruce Lee because I didn't know what a boxing class was yet. <laughs> Bruce Lee was the baddest motherfucker around, dog. You watch his tapes, he was beating 15 people at the same time. People waiting in line to get their ass whooped <laughs> by Bruce Lee. And I was like, hell yeah, I wanna be that good. I would practice all his moves and I was like, yo, whenever I get in a fight again, I'm gonna be ready. And it was a year later when my my cousin asked me to come fight with them, right? He was like, yo, I heard from a couple people, man, that you got some hands now, you've been in some fights. Listen, we gotta handle some shit, man. Me and some other dudes, you wanna ride with us? I was like, hell yeah, man, cause I gotta redeem myself. And my cousin was like, don't ever say that again. <laughs> Nigga, you are not a coupon. <laughs> and he was right, I'm not a coupon. I'm He's very right about that. <laughs> so I jumped in the truck, and it was me, my cousin, and uh, the five other dudes that was with us when I got my ass whooped the first time. So most of the conversation was about how I got my ass whooped the first time. <laughs> Which sucks, because they're like, is, is this bitch ass nigga, I'm like, I'm right here, and I have a name. At one point, I was like, hey, uh, this isn't good for morale, and they didn't know what... <laughs> And they didn't know what morale meant. They, they thought it was a chick that wasn't giving me no pussy. So then they started talking shit about that for 10 minutes. Like, oh, morale ain't giving this nigga no pussy. Ah! I'm like, man, I wish I didn't drop out of eighth grade. But I just let it happen. It wasn't nothing I could do. Uh, now in Chicago, we used to fight in these like old lots or these old fields so that police wouldn't lock you up for you know extended amounts of time like they do black people in America. Uh, so we could fight and go home, and, you know, it's before like shooting. Well, they're still shooting, but these, these guys would fight it out, right? And so we rolled up to this field. It's my first time being in this field and shit, right? And I'm looking around as I get out the car, and the sun is setting, there's flowers. I'm like, yo, this is a romantic place to get your ass whooped. <laughs> why, why are we fighting in an R. Kelly set? I don't want to get knocked out and fall in love, nigga. <laughs> I didn't say, this is all in my head though, I wasn't saying nothing, I, I had learned from my mistakes, so I was like, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna say nothing, I'm gonna be tough the whole time. So I was grabbing my dick way longer than I should. <laughs> I'm just walking around like, yo, what's good? <laughs> at, at one point, the gangster was like, yo, what's wrong with your dick? Nothing, nigga. <laughs> I slowly took it. <laughs> he was like, you gotta make sure it's there? I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> So we waited, it's, uh, it's me and six other dudes, right? Now, um, uh, two cars pull up, right? Two four-door sedans. Uh, there was 20 dudes in these two four-door sedans. And I don't know if y'all do math quick, but uh, 20 dudes cannot fit comfortably in two four-door sedans. That meant that these gangsters rolled to this gang fight lapped up, which is not a gangster way to travel. That means that y'all were riding like, yo, we gonna fuck them up. You know what I'm saying, dog? You know what I'm saying? And the dude's like, yeah, yeah, but can you lift your butt? Cause you thick, dog. Why you twerking on me, cuz? 20 dudes, y'all didn't have one more car? But I ain't say nothing. And they pulled up, 20 dudes clown card out the fucking cars. <laughs> and they stretched along this field, the sun was behind them, and for a split second, I was like, are these niggas the heroes? Cause <laughs> they look like the heroes of this story. But I ain't say nothing, man. And as they walked towards us, everybody was doing they, whatever they do. I was sitting there holding my dick. <laughs> I think I was holding it with two hands, which is so weird to do. <laughs> Don't kick me here, you know. <laughs> then the guy in the middle, he was like, yeah, man, hey. <laughs> Yo, we about to fuck y'all. And before he could say up, I was like, not again. I ran. <laughs> Which had to be weird for the guys hear me say not again. Cause, that, <laughs> cause who does that? <laughs> 
Who does that ever in life? Not again! <laughs> but I ran so fast, everybody was shocked, like, where's he going? You know what I mean? They, they all had questions. I ran up to the guy in the middle, I jumped, and I realized he's very tall. So I had to, so I had to bring it up here, bow, and I swung and I hit and I connected to his chin right now. Hitting somebody when they don't deserve it, it's an asshole thing to do. But when you hit somebody that's, uh, that's trying to kill you, ooh, it feels great. And I was like, oh, fireworks went off of my head. It was amazing. I was like, I'm the king of everything. I saw his spit fly. I was like, I know what that's like, you know? <laughs> It was a solid punch, man. You know, it was great. And I was celebrating. I'm like, yeah, I'm finally a gangster. In my mind, I'm saying this. And as I'm saying this, four fists hit me at the same time. <laughs> and I don't know if you've been hit in unison, but the shit hurts a lot. One felt like it came from God, like you shouldn't be here. You know what I mean? <laughs> and as I got hit at the same time, I yelled out, y'all supposed to wait like Bruce Lee. Like that's... <laughs> Yeah, I yelled that dumb shit out, yeah, yeah. And I fell to the ground, I think I knocked out for about 30, 40 seconds, right? I came to, my face fucking hurting, pulsating everywhere. But I looked around and I noticed that nobody was fighting because everybody was laughing at what the fuck I just said. <laughs> These grown gangsters holding guns like, this nigga thinks he's Bruce! <laughs> reenacting what just happened, like, who am I? Uh, <laughs> have you ever seen a good conversation and you try to laugh your way into it? That's what I did with this, like, <laughs> right, that was crazy, huh? They, <laughs> they pushed me away, like, shut your bitch ass up. <laughs> and after 10 minutes of them laughing at me, pointing, laughing, reenacting, and laughing, the gangster from the other gang was like, you know what, duh? <laughs> oh, no, that was... That was funny as hell. <laughs> hey, dog, you know what? I forgot what the fuck we was fighting about. <laughs> hey, dog, let's go to McDonald's, grab some food, go get some drinks, man, and just chill, and let's talk about your cousin some more, nigga. <laughs> and all I'm saying is, I'm bringing communities together, so what the fuck are y'all doing? <laughs> My name is Chris Red. Thank y'all so much. Oh, man.